All right, joining me now here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Jeff Charlotte. Jeff is a journalist, a contributing editor to Harper's and Rolling Stone, and the best-selling author of several books, including The Family and C Street. He is the editor of the new anthology, Radiant Truths, Essential Dispatches, Reports, Confessions, and Other Essays on American Belief, all of which you can find at jeffcharlotte.blogspot.com and on Twitter at Jeff Charlotte. Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show. Hi, Matt. Thanks for having me. All right. So, Jeff, uh, the new anthology, Radiant Truths. Actually, let's begin by, uh, in your introduction, you actually entitle it This Mutant Genre. Uh, Let's begin by discussing what exactly do you mean by that? So, the the mutant genre is what we sometimes call literary journalism or narrative nonfiction or creative nonfiction, or there are other terms. It's the art of fact. It's telling true stories, factually reported stories, but using the techniques of fiction and even poetry, uh, borrowing, uh, you know, the ability to, uh, to construct scenes and dialogue. It's a great magazine story. It's a brilliant documentary film. It's documentary art. And, and, and you know, maybe in this context, because I know your show has, has uh, a, a political grounding, it's worth thinking um, that these are the kind of stories that give us the deeper insights um, and that also don't recreate what I see as a politically disastrous insistence on the objectivity of the news. These are the stories that uh, reveal the subjectivity of how we look at the world and make that not a weakness but a strength. Discuss again some of the some of the difference of of how how these techniques these techniques of fiction and nonfiction are kind of combined. Where be it uh, how they color a piece, how they inspire. What what are some of the the things, and how do they actually come to mesh in these type of in this type of literature? Well, I mean, you take it. You know, my book starts. Uh, it, it goes from Walt Whitman in the Civil War to the present, right? And it begins with Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman, everyone knows, a great poet of the leaves of grass, but I've always liked him as a journalist better. He was also a radical journalist. People forget this. Um, yeah. And here he is, and you know, he believes so deeply in democracy. He, he wrote poems about it, he wrote essays about it, democratic vistas. The Civil War presents him with this incredible problem. How do you have a civil war in a democracy? It doesn't seem to make sense. If everybody has a vote, how do you get to war? Well, of course, at that time, not everybody did have a vote. Uh, but nonetheless, he said, well, if I'm going to report on this, if I'm going to tell what's happening, I need to find a new form. And in his book, Specimen Days, he did. And it's prose. It's not poetry, although it's beautiful. It's hard to tell the difference. He says, I need to, to get at what it feels like for these, these young men who are uh, in war. And he was most interested, I think, in, in the men who are not you know, just constricted into the armies, but were fighting for union and fighting to end slavery. And he says, is that, that's news, that feeling of, of wanting to risk your life. So, so how do I get to do that? He goes and he spends lots and lots of time with them. He reconstructs scenes. He tells a story. It's not a stack of facts. It's not just data. This is the antidote to big data, big data that's taking over the news, crushing us all into numbers. These are the stories of 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 human and real life, and and so I follow those. Uh, I'm interested in those stories that deal with belief broadly defined, which is really right at the heart of the American dilemma. It's the First Amendment, you know. First Amendment yeah. is free speech, and it's also freedom of religion. It's also freedom from religion. How are we going to document how our fellow citizens believe? And we need to do that. We need to get to that subjective experience of people's beliefs other than our than other than our own if we're going to live together in a democracy. Let's discuss how you approached those very terms, uh, uh, the terms of belief, the terms American, the term of even like religion because that 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 you know that is a very much a part of this. How did you actually go about looking into that actual approach and, and approach, approach those actual terms. By negotiating with my publisher, uh, the, the, the subtitle <laughs> is Radiant Truths, Essential Dispatches, Reports, Confessions, and Other Essays on American Belief. And, and I wanted it to be American religion. And the reason, and people say, well, I, you know, there's a phrase people like to say, some people, uh, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. This has to do, <laughs> religion is a really broad term. What religion means is to bind. It, I mean, religion means that I acknowledge the existence of other 
human beings, of other entities, of other consciousnesses. That doesn't mean that you believe in uh, God or gods or, or whatever. I happen not to. I, I'm not even interested in that question. What I'm interested in is what other human beings believe. I don't worry myself about, about afterlife and all this kind of stuff. But So I like that term religion, but my publisher was afraid. People are afraid. Uh, they'll, they'll think that's just church, and they won't understand <laughs> if they open this book, they're going to find um, you know, they're going to find pagans in Kansas, and they're going to find H.L. Mencken, the most famous atheist of the 20th century, spying on the Scopes <laughs> monkey trial. They're going to find hoodoo doctors in New Orleans. They're going to find union organizers marching in, uh, uh, in the 1930s. They're going to find Norman Mailer levitating the Pentagon. All of these things <laughs> encompass American belief. It's not simple. We are not a Christian nation. We are a very strange nation. <laughs> I'm talking to Jeff Charlotte, author of several books, the latest of the anthology, Radiant Truths, Essential Dispatches, Reports, Confessions, and Other Essays on American Belief. Belief, not religion, American belief. Uh, you can find it at jeffcharlotte.blogspot.com and on Twitter at Jeff Charlotte. Yeah, I, 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 I love in the introduction uh, the, 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 the little story you tell about... Uh, and, and the kind of the, the idea of something brought you here. Um, <laughs> that's uh, discuss that because it, it really is because again, I, I mean, I've read your other books, and and, I, and again, like the family is one of my favorite books. It, it is like one of the most interesting pieces of, of, of literary journalism I've ever read. It is so encompassing and so revealing uh, on on just just how how the, the that type of mindset works, which is just so so unbelievably fascinating. So l let's talk a bit about. About that, what what brought you well, to these, there, yeah. these, yeah. these bits well, here? I mean, the, the thing about you mentioned the family. So the family, the the secret fundamentals, the heart of American power is is is. This, I mean, I think I spent uh, seven eight years researching that book on um, this very influential and little known uh, fundamentalist network. Um, they bring you the National Prayer Breakfast. They also brought you uh, the Ugandan Kill the Gays Bill. They're actually an international movement and very complicated and they uh, kind of avoid publicity and so on. And so I've, I've actually written two books about them, an awful lot of investigative yeah. journalism from magazines like Harper's and Rolling Stone and Mother Jones. And still, they insist something must have brought you here. It's no accident <laughs> that you came to us. I'm like, no, I know it's no accident. I set out to expose you. It wasn't an yeah. accident. Um, and, <laughs> and that sort of insistence that, um, uh, that somehow I must be part of a divine plan. They have actually finally written me off. And so now I'm part of a satanic <laughs> plan. But, but that experience, I mean, I, I write about fundamentalists, but I also write about all sorts of other groups and fundamentalists who are not politically threatening or just interesting. And wherever you go, whatever church or cult compound or temple or whatever it is, you know, reporting on this for years, the first instinct people have when they see a writer come in the room to ask them about these matters of ultimate concern. And so they say, this must be something brought you here. And they think you're there because you want to convert. They think you're right. there because you want to convert. And secular people say, see that too. Well, you know, Charlotte, you keep writing about religion. When are you going to find one? And the answer is no. I, I, I'm not a seeker. I'm interested in human beings. Why is it so hard for us to imagine uh, that kind of humanism, of, of being really vitally engaged in uh, the religious, spiritual, anti-religious, anti-spiritual commitments of our fellow citizens, because that's really, I mean, that is our own liberation when we can kind of uh, uh, come alongside uh, each other and, and, and hear and see as, as, uh, as others do. So something brought me there, which is, I suppose, is that desire to... Uh, enter into, you know, the kind of the cacophonous choir of, of American belief.